Welcome to another of our video lectures on YouTube and today we are going to look at the design of an extended end plate moment connection in IDEA Statica. We have looked at the manual calculation and manual design of this extended end plate moment connection in our steel design series also. Today we will design the same joint but this time in IDEA Statica software and then we will compare the results of the two. First, what we did in manual calculations and then the results from our software calculations. So before beginning with the actual design in IDI Statica, let me discuss a little bit about the extended end plate moment connections. So these are the one of the most commonly used connection that is used to connect a beam to a column or a beam to a beam and if we talk, see about these moment connection there are then there are major four types of connection the first type is the first type of our extended end plate moment connection is four bolt Unstiffened connection. We have four bolt unstiffened. Then we have four bolt stiffened. And then we have eight bolt stiffened. So these three are the most commonly used type of end plate moment connection. And if you see here, these are designated with the number of bolts, 4 bolt, 4 bolt and 8 bolt. So the number of bolts in the designation, this refers to the number of bolts adjacent to the tension flange in a negative moment connection. So these 4 bolt are the number of bolts in the tension flange. And the same number of bolts, that is four bolts are also used at the compressive flange so that they may resist the moments in case of moment reversal. So actually four bolt on stiffened connection has total eight bolts and eight bolt stiffened connection has actually 16 bolts. The number here only refers to the number of bolts near the tension flange. So if you want to learn more about these moment connections, then some important references I want to give. One is the AISC Steel Construction Manual. This is published by the AISC. And in this manual, if you look at part 12, then you can know more about the design of fully restrained moment connections. Similarly, specific to this type of connection, that is our extended end plate moment connection, AISC has also published two design guides. One is the AISC design guide 4, which is generally used for both static and seismic loads, and another is AISC design guide 16. This is primarily used for static loads only. So design procedures have been discussed in both of these design guides that is design guide 4 and design guide 16. So this is the general introduction to our type of connection that we are going to design today. Now we will start with the design in IDEA Statica and remember in our steel design lecture we used this end plate moment connection to connect these two beams and columns this was our column which was composed of two ISMC 300 channels and these were connected by 8 mm thick batten plates in this way so the depth of our column section was 300 mm excluding the width of these batten plates and the width of our column section was 225 mm. 
so this column was connected to our i wheel which was our ismb 250 section and to connect these two beams and columns we use the four volt on a stiffened connection So we are going to use the same type of connection today to connect these two beams and columns. So now let's go to our software. <clears throat> I have already opened Idea Statica here. Go to connection. Please wait for some time. A new dialog box will appear. And there you can select the class topology and design for example our class is the same here we want to join a connection or we want to design a connection connecting a beam to a column we will search or we will use this kind of topology and the type of moment connection that we will be using is this type here which is our extended end plate moment connections why is it called extended because you can see that the end plate that is used here has extended beyond the flanges of the beam if this end plate was flush in level with the flanges of our beam then we will call it just an end plate moment connection but since the end plate has extended beyond the flanges we call it extended end plate moment connection so the steel grade we will be using for now is efa 250 the bolt assembly let me select by clicking here 8.8 .8 grade bolts but of 16 mm diameter so m16 8.8 and concrete grade m20 let's leave as it is the design code that we will be using is indian you can even give the name and description of your design here i will leave those blanks and then i will click on create project So now our design workspace appears after clicking on create project. We have discussed about the general interface of this idea statica software in our previous lecture on the design of fin plate connection also. Now you can see here our default topology or our default design which is connecting an I beam to an I column with stiffeners. These are stiffeners here is present here. So to begin with the design, first we have to change the design section that we are going to be using. So if you click on this column section here, this is member C, which is also listed under the members here. And the member currently used is ISWB 200 section. We have to change this. So to change it, let's click on this plus sign here, add new. Now we are not using any standard rule section for our column, rather we are using a built up column composed of two medium channel 300 sections. So for that, we have to go to this welded or composed part and we have to manually draw that built up column in this software here. To manually draw that built up column, I will select the last option here, generally still cross section. And after clicking on that, a new cross section editor box appears here. So, in this general cross section editor, we have to draw a new built up column. So, to do that, let's click on this new here. A new section we have to import on this interface. First, we will import one medium channel 300 section so i will click on this channel section under this geometry shape i will click on these three dots and under this list of is808 sections because you will find the details of this rolled sections in is code 808 let's select this medium channel is808 and select the ismc 300 let's click on ok let's click on ok now one medium channel has come here on your screen 
now we have to import another medium channel section also because we are using two ismc 300 sections for that click on new again select the channel sections again then select the geometry as ismc 300 okay again click on okay now another channel section has also been drawn here or brought to this interface but you cannot see that because it is overlapping with the first channel section so if you look at the table below here cross section components the first section is also ismc 300 and the second section is also ismc 300 by selecting this ismc 300 let me rotate this by some amount so that you can visually see both of these sections for example under this rx1 here i will type minus 180 degrees and press enter now you can see another channel section also which has rotated about its axis and now both are visible here so here we saw that the distance between these two channel sections were or the total dimension was 225 mm this 300 mm is according to the depth of the section which is 300 mm now we have to separate these two channel sections in such a way that the total distance along this axis will be 225 mm so let me minimize this and let me click on this dimensions here so that the dimensions will appear on your screen now you can see that the dimension here currently overlapping is total 66 mm and 66 mm if you add these two this will come out to be 132 mm so by selecting on this second ismc here if you insert the value of y that is offset in y distance is minus 132 which is summation of 62 66 plus 66 now you can see that these two channel sections have further separated now they are just touching each other at the tip of their flanges but now they are totally separate but this 180 mm is not our total dimension here our total dimension is 225 mm so to get this to 225 mm we have to further add 45 mm so here what we will do is we will perform 132 plus 45 mm which comes out to be 177 mm so our total offset here should be minus 177 now you can see this has been drawn here now we have to connect these two medium channel sections using plates and these plates will be along this width of this composite column or this built up column here to insert the plate do the same thing go to new now the plate that or the batten plate that we want to insert may not be a standard plate so we want to give our own thickness and own dimension to do that click on this general plate section here if you want to use a standard plate you can select this strip steel but for general plate click here now the batten plates that we used was of 8 mm thickness and the total width will be 225 mm that is equal to the width of our column so let's click on ok now this batten plate has also come here now we have to first center it to center it what you can do is you can perform different trial and error also here by knowing the actual geometrical properties of these both sections you can perform trial and error here to exactly center this plate here so first i will offset it let's say for by 80 mm now if you zoom on to this figure you can see that it is not exactly centered so let me increase it to 85 mm still it's not centered here let me use 87 mm still you can see that some portion is beyond this column if i increase it to 88 now it's almost centered let me use 88.5 so now after using 88.5 this is exactly centered now we have to take it to the level of here 
So to do that, we can just offset it in Z direction by, if you see here, the depth of one half of this section is 150. So let's say 150. Now if you zoom here, you can see that this channel section and our plates are overlapping and that is due to the thickness of our plate section. The half of its thickness will be 4 mm since we are using a 8 mm thick plate. So increase this offset in Z direction by 4 mm and make it 154. Now you can see this plate is exactly just touching the column section. Do the same for another side also. Go to new. Select this general plate. Insert thickness is 8 mm and B is 225 mm. Click on OK. Now this is come here. Offset for this fourth element also in Y direction by 88.5. Now in Z direction offset it by minus 154. So that this plate will go to the other side here. Now this brings us to the end of this modeling of our composed or built up column here. So let's click on OK. Now you can see that our built up column has been replaced as member C here. You can see here what is written is stiff one cannot execute the operation. This is because previously when our column section was an I section, there was stiffness used, but we don't need this stiffness now. So under these operations here, the stiffener right click on this stiffener here and let's click on delete here now this error warning has gone after changing the column section i will change the beam section which is b here our beam section is ismb 250 you can see that ismb 250 section has already been used here so i did not change this for now so after making this adjustment for beam and column now let's make the adjustment for end plate here. Select this end plate and the corresponding properties of end plate editor will appear on our right hand side here. Let me change the view of our drawing here. Now you can see the side view. So for end plate, there are some values to insert here. For example, first is member one. This member one is our beam B here. Member 1 represents the first member that is to be connected by the end plate. We do not need member B here since we are only concerned with the connection of one beam with our column. If there were two beams, another beam coming from another direction, then you have to specify member 2 also. Our connected to section is our column here. So the material is FE250 grid and the thickness of our end plate let's leave this as 10 mm for now our connection type is bolted that means what type of connection that we want to use between end plate and our column currently our end plate is connected to our column using this bolts here if you want to use welded sections then you can click this drop down menu and also select welded here now you can see that the end plate is also connected to our column using the welds here but we want bolted section so let me just select bolted here and this dimensions here the dimensions currently is selected as two profile symmetrical so this dimension means what is the mode or what is the way to determine the end plate dimensions if you click on this drop down menu, there are different options here. I will select this rectangle option and by selecting this rectangle option, what will happen is that the plate dimensions are defined by the distances of top, bottom, left and right plate is from the centroid of the member. That means if this is our end plate here and this is the centroid of our end plate here. Yeah. So our dimensions of this top is, the bottom is, 
and the left edge and right edge will all be defined with respect to this centroid. So that is the mode of determining the dimension when we use the option rectangle here. So if you remember in our last manual calculation design, we used an end plate of width of 225 mm that is equal to the width of our column and the depth of our end section was 450 mm so now the half of this depth will be 225 mm and the half of the width will be 112.5 mm so now we will define the dimensions of all these edges with respect to the centroid of this end plate by selecting the option rectangle here. Now the top we will define is 225 mm that is half of our total depth. Left we will define is 112.5 mm. The bottom will also be defined as 225 mm and the right will also be defined as 112.5 mm. So in this way the dimensions of our end plate have been determined here. So this backing plate we don't need here. This notch will be needed when flanges of beam are aligned to the flanges of column and are in collision. So when, when we are using both column and beam sections as I section, then in that case, the flanges of the beam and column may come in contact with each other. To do that, we have to insert a notch and then we can select this notch here and then determine the notch offset. But for now, we don't need the notch. Now let's come to bolts that we are going to be using. The bolt we have selected as default during the beginning of our design process was 16mm dia bolts of grade 8.8. .8. Now here you have to insert the top layers and the left layers to calculate or to specify the number and the distances of bolts. So if you look at the diagram here, again the bolts have been defined with respect to the centroid of our beam or centroid of our end plate here. The top layers, there are two distances, minus 40 and 30 here. You can see that corresponding to the centroid at this level, somewhere at this level, one bolt has been introduced at a distance of 40 mm down, that is minus 40, and another bolt has been introduced at a distance of 30 mm up. Similarly, the left layers minus 25 means, <coughs> sorry, the bolts have been introduced to the left of this centroid at a distance of 25 mm. That's it, this distance here, if you see here. Now these two layers of bolt is not sufficient for us. We need to introduce four layers of bolt. So we will introduce the top layers in a similar way. <coughs> Excuse me. So to one top layer, for example, let's say we are going to have it a distance of 160 mm below, that is minus 160. Similarly, another will be at 160 positive that means plus 160 so another layer we will have let's say at minus 80 that means 80 mm below and another layer we will have at plus 80 that is 80 mm at. now you can see that these four bolts have been introduced so this topmost bolt is at a distance of 160 mm from the centroid of this end plate and the bottommost bolt is also at a distance of 160 mm whereas these two bolts are at a distance of respectively 80 and minus 80 mm from the centroid. Also now for the rows of these bolts, we need two rows of the bolt and to introduce the two rows of the bolt, we have to insert another numerical value on this left layer here. So we will, this 25 mm distance is very less and uh, we can almost see that this beam and the bolts have almost come to overlap. So one layer, we will introduce at a distance of 60 mm that is minus 60 that means to the left and another plus 60 that means to the right now you can see that these bolts have been introduced here 
So why did we call this connection a four bolt unstiffened connection? Because you can see that these four bolts are near the tension zone of our beam flanges. If we consider this upper layer, the tension zone. Similarly, in case of moment reversal, the bottom section may also come into tension and we have used here also four bolts in this zone here so that it is called four bolt connection. Now shear plane in thread has been checked here. This checking ensures that we use the gross diameter of the bolt minus the, the area of the threads while calculating the forces. And the shear force transfer has been selected as bearing tension shear interaction such that the tension shear interaction will also be checked during the design of bolts. Now finally we have come to this weld here. These bolts have been used to connect the end plate to our column section whereas these welds are used to connect our beam to our end plate. So while manufacturing these type of end connections what generally happens is that the beam is connected to the end plate using the weights in the factory or in shop itself whereas to connect the beam to the column section that is usually done in the field. So to specify the size of weld, size of weld we first have to introduce or give the value of its throat thickness. So if you leave this throat thickness at zero, the weld thickness is determined automatically according to the thickness of the plate. But for now, we will give some value of it. For example, for flanges, let us suppose that we are using 10 mm thick bolt or weld, sorry, not bolts. And wave, we are using a throat thickness of 8 mm. So this value is coming from the manual design itself. So I'm using the same value here. This material, you can either select the material of your bolt or if you leave the material as default, then the material is determined automatically according to the material of corresponding plate. So let me select this as default. And we are using this double fillet weld for both beam and flanges and waves of our beam. So this option has been selected here. Now our input of cross-sectional dimensions, end plate, bolts and welds are complete. The final thing left to be given as input is the value of our loads here. So under the load effect, select LE1. The load that was coming onto our structure here, you can see is, it is being represented by these two arrows. The first is the shear force, which is by default at 20 kN in the downward direction. From our design data, the value of our shear force was about 80 or 90 kilonewton. So it was actually 90.27 kilonewton. And the value of our moment was 80.9 kilonewton meter. So the same load value we are going to use here now. You can see here, here we have a clockwise moment of 80.9 kilonewton meter and a downward shear of 90.3 kilonewton meter. So our modeling is complete now. Our load application is also complete. Now we will go for the design and check of our connection here. So under this design tab here, you can just click on calculate and it will run nonlinear anal analysis for stress strain analysis. So the iterations are being performed here. So now you can see here that the analysis is 100% is complete. The plastic strain in our plates is 20.6 which is greater than the limitation of 5 percent is the utilization ratio or utilization value for our both bolts and welds is very much greater than 100 percent is which is not allowed that means our capacity is lesser than the design so we have to make for corrections here to to do corrections for this what we can do is select this end plate here you can see that much stress is being applied on our bolts and on our weld here. 
that may be due to the less thickness of our end plate here so what we will do here is we will increase our end plate thickness to 14 mm and this was the end plate thickness that we used during our manual design also after increasing increasing the thickness of our end plate just perform calculation once again and let's see what values will appear here so now we can see that almost every criteria has passed here the plastic strain is 3.6 which is less than 5 percentage the utilization of our bolts is 86.1 The capacity of our bolts have also been used to 86.1 percentage and our capacity of weld have been used almost 100 percentage. So to make our weld safe here, what we can do is we can make some changes as we did during our manual design here. So what we did there was for the welds in our flanges here. Instead of using this fillet weld, what we can do is we can use butt weld here. So if you select this butt weld type here for flanges and perform the calculation once again, let's see what we get here. Now you can see that the capacity of the welds that have been utilized has decreased from about 99.7% to 98.2%. So you can go to this check tab now. And you can see different results being published here. Our design is safe and our design is complete here. You can see the results for different plates here. So what you have to remember is the design methodology or the design principle of this idea statica that is known as CBFM or that is the component based finite element method. So even for our these I sections, these box sections and all of these end plates, what this software does is this separates these members into different plates and the analysis is performed for each plate here. For example, you can see all of these items represents the different plates of our column section here. Some may be the wave, some may be the flanges and for each section here, the analysis has been performed for extreme load effects. You can see the design yield strength here, which is taken as 227.3 and this value you got by dividing our yield strength that is 250 megapascals by the partial safety factor for resistance due to yielding and that partial safety factor according to IS code is 1.1. So if you divide 250 by 1.1, you get this design yield strength value. And this plastic strain value, which is 2.8 here and that is less than the 5% limiting value. This 5% limiting value is generally given in the Euro code and I don't think that is given in the IS code. So when the stress in our certain plates exceeds the design yield strength, then that plate goes into the state of plastic strain and that level of plastic strain should be less than 5% but the maximum plastic strain in our design has come out to be 2.8% and it's okay. So these are the design results for plates, these are the design results for bolts and also we have the design result for welds here. So besides this design result in idea statica, you can also visualize the level of stress. So if you click on this draw equivalent stress option here, then the stress contours of our, this connection is displayed here. The maximum stress level that can reach is 227.3 megapascals that is the design yield stress here and beyond that plastic strain will be introduced in our connection and that plastic strain maximum is 2.8 here as we discussed which is less than the limiting value. Similarly you can also see the deformed shape here. If I select the mesh and select the deformed option here you can see the way that the deformation takes place in this joint. You can also increase the scale of deformation to visualize this deformation more clearly. Suppose, let's see here, we have increased it to 20 and now you can see the large deformations 
that can be visualized here. So this deformation is corresponding to the fact that our moment is anti-clockwise here and our shear is also acting in the downward direction. Because of these downward forces and downward moments, the upper zone is in the tension zone and high stress is being introduced at the bolt sections in this tension zone. If our moment were anti-clockwise and the shear was also acting upwards, then this zone would be seen here in the bottom zone here, that is the tension zone would be visualized here. So based on the application of our load, this deformation is actually correct. So after looking at this deformation, finally you can also generate reports. To do that, go to reports here. We have already discussed this in our previous lecture on design of field plate connection in IDI Statica also. Select the project item settings. For example, for explanation, I want the all explanations of used symbols in one place. I want formulas for all values in the table. Similarly, I want the table of items and detailed drawings here. I want the cost estimate also. So select the project item settings here and refresh your report. And then all of these items will be generated here. Now you can see here the general cross section, bolts, load effects, the checks that have been performed here, the results for our plates, the strain check, the results of our bolt. You can also get the design data here. You can see that the detailed results have been published for all of our eight bolts. That is for bolt B1, similarly bolt B2. In this way, the results have been populated for all of our bolts till B8 here. B7 and B8 also here. And also the detailed design results have been populated for weld items also. For example, here one you have here, another you have here. Similarly, the cost estimation sheet have also been given. You have billing of materials and finally you have the drawings also. This is the drawing of our end plate. And then you have the symbol explanation at the very end and these code settings. So here we have completed the design of this end plate moment connection. You can also go back to our previous lecture on manual calculation and compare the results of this to the results of the manual calculation. That I will leave it upon you. So we have come to the end of this lecture. We will meet again soon in another lecture. Till then stay safe and thank you.